Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 2019 8.53 AAA 23D. Uh, the purpose of this autopilot test, and you'll notice that I'm going on the same old loop that I basically said that I would never go on before. So, yes, that is technically true. I am going on the same old loop that the car normally does a pretty good job with, even on previous autopilot versions. This is also the release that brought uh, no confirm navigate on autopilot to my car. So there will be subsequent videos testing out this. But the reason that I'm doing this loop is because I'd received autopilot version 8.3 prior to this which um, brought some of the feature enhancements, but it did not bring, and here we go. Now watch how sharp the car is making this turn and how it's hugging the inside. And note right here, it'll make a very sharp adjustment to the left so it doesn't swing outside. Now watch it do the same thing going back the other way. If it feels like it's gonna go outside the lane, it makes these little sharp, tight adjustments, and there goes the nag. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, my previous version was 2019 8.3. And that did not bring no confirm, but it brought a slew of other features, um, a lot of the modern updates. So that got me up to uh, dog mode on my Hardware 2 car, as well as um, theoretical um, stoplight notification when you're about to run a stoplight. Although since you, the verbiage is you are literally about to run a stoplight, like that one's kind of a hard one to test. I have not seen it working yet. Um, I have taken over from autopilot in every instance in which. Um, I felt like it was time for me to intervene so I wouldn't accidentally risk going into the inter intersection or looking to outside observers like I was about to carelessly drive into the intersection. Um, so with that 8.3 version that I got, um, even though the new neural net wasn't really touted until the 8.4, 8.5, I did notice some pretty significant behavior differences in autopilot. Um, so one of those behavior differences that I noticed is what you just saw on the standard S loop. So Normally, when we've done that test in the past, even though the car was doing a pretty good job of lane keeping and um, basically just following the road and staying within the lane, it did not always, even on the later versions, do what I would describe as a great job of lane centering. Uh, it wouldn't make, there, there was basically a limit to how sharp the car was willing to make a turn or adjustment. And if the speed that you're entering the turn meant that it was going to require a sharper adjustment than it was willing to make, then it would start to make the adjustment, it would continue to make, but it would kind of take the turn a little bit wide. And that's something that um, seems to have been corrected in this new version as of 8.3 and now also in the 8.5 version that I'm on that brings the no confirm. So this is the standard loop um, that we used to do, and I'm just doing one quick test of this, and then the next video will be uh, testing out the no confirm navigate on autopilot. But while that particular area is something that has gotten better, there's another area that I have since noticed is demonstrably worse, at least for my car. Um, and that is uh, specifically lane keeping in splitting lanes. So I posted a video um, last week of a drive. It wasn't a premeditated drive. It was just you know me kind of going from one destination to another. And I saw my car do something that appeared, okay, we can go, do something that appeared to be pretty cool. It looked like it was taking an exit and then it swerved to avoid some debris. Now I posted that to get feedback because I honestly wasn't sure. And let's see what it does right here. Okay, it's followed this lane. On this particular section, I've actually seen it go into the left-hand turn lane before. And let's see if it does it here. Yeah, it's getting a little naggy. Okay, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so having rewatched that video and gotten feedback, you know, and seen it over and over again, I totally agree with already feedback that I was getting in the thread in the YouTube comments, which is, nah, it doesn't really look like it was swerving to avoid debris. It really more looks like the car was just doing a poor job of lane keeping when the lane split into two. It started to veer off into the turn lane, realized that it was kind of in between two lanes, and that recentered itself back in the lane. So in this particular instance, what the car had done was it avoided a piece of debris, and it ended up getting into the lane that it was supposed to get into. So you could basically say that it did the right thing for the wrong reasons. The reasons that it did it had nothing to do with navigate on autopilot or the fact that there was an obstruction in the road, which is unfortunate because those would have been really cool things to see the car do. Uh, now, one thing that I am also noticing on this new 8.5 version, this wasn't even in the 8.3 version necessarily, is we'll do a lane change manually initiated, is that. Um, when I am not on autopilot, and this will probably be uh, present in the video, let's go ahead and take it off autopilot, uh, the adjacent lane lines that are detected are still there. 
previously I would only see, you know, I'd see multiple lane lines ever since the 9.0 update, but I would only see the lane lines while the autopilot was actively engaged. When the autopilot was not engaged, the lane lines would disappear even though I would still see the cars. Now I see the lane lines pretty much all the time, which is, you know, kind of neat. All right, let's do autopilot. No, 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 it's not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I figured I'd give it a shot, but there's only so fast that I feel comfortable rocketing towards a stoplight at with autopilot on. So yeah, as I was saying, um, when the car has to deal with a lane that splits into multiple lanes or a turn lane that comes up, this is an area that I've noticed that autopilot traditionally has been pretty rock solid on, but these days um, I feel like it has regressed somewhat. It does not seem to be doing quite as good a job of that as it used to. But where it's much, much better is making sharper turns and tighter little adjustments to maintain lane keeping. Like it honestly, the way that it's driving feels more like what I would describe a human driver is doing. So you know what, as long as we're here, let's go ahead and hop on the highway. It's probably going to be fairly trafficy, which is actually not a bad way to test this out. It's a little bit after rush hour. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and engage. And I'm going to put in a common destination of mine. Alright, now this is something else that Autopilot does an okay job of. So that situation in which a lane ended and it merged into the highway. It knows what lane it needs to get into in order to be able to follow to the route, generally, you know, as supplied by the openmaps.org um, wiki, essentially, of, of map data that can be frequently updated and even updated by end users, and we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Um, but what it does not seem to do a great job of is understanding exactly when those lanes end. Like, I've seen it start to make a left-hand turn signal turn in order to get over to a left lane, but then the lane abruptly ends. It doesn't realize that the lane has abruptly end, ended, and then it immediately gets into the, trip, into the uh, fast lane. Um, in other instances, I've seen it basically just kind of, not necessarily a nav on autopilot feature, but basically just follow that road until the two lanes become one. Like, normal autopilot actually does a fine job of dealing with that. The only problem is normal autopilot doesn't necessarily signal when it merges. Now, here is an exit where the exit lane basically starts way back here. <clears throat> and I want to see what nav on autopilot does for this. See, at any point right now, it should be getting me over into that lane. Like, it should understand that this is either a three-lane road or that it's a two-lane road and that that is a dedicated exit lane that I should have already gotten into. What instead it's going to do is wait until the exit comes up and then it's going to try and take it here, but here's where it fails. Now I'm going to have to take over to end the turn signal. And here's where it fails because it tries to exit on a solid white line. This is a problem that I've had with... What are you doing? Now it's going... Okay, now it's going crazy. Okay, that was some weird phantom breaking. Um, I think it was still close enough to the exit that it was still trying to take the exit, that's why it slowed down there. So, yes, this is a problem where um, navigating on autopilot, basically, if the map data wants to watch it slow down and let these cars in, see, this is kind of a cool feature. I love that it does this. And supposedly it's actually responding, the neural net is actually responding to uh, understanding the pattern, not necessarily um, recognizing as a, as a specific programmed action recognizing that uh, turn signal lights have been turned on, but recognizing as a pattern, hey, when I see that left-hand light flashing on the car, that's an indication that the car is about to get over into my lane. I should probably make room for it, um, as was mentioned in the uh, autonomous driving keynote today. So yeah, if the map data doesn't really give the car a great indication of where the exit is, and I've actually gone on to openmapdata.org, and I've even made my own modifications. In fact, that exit that we just came from, um, I've gone on, and I'll show you screenshots here in the video, uh, but if you're looking at this screenshot here, the exit used to be located right here, and I actually created an account on here and added my own first user submission and updated the exit to be right here. This is for the exit that I just passed, it's actually for the exit that is uh, closer to my house. Now, unfortunately, uh, it's been, I don't know, three or four weeks since I made that update, and I have not observed any different behavior on that particular exit from the car, so I have no idea how frequent the feedback loop is on this. 
But basically, you do have the ability to go in and make your own updates if the map data is off, which is really cool. What's somewhat less cool is just not understanding how or when that's actually going to have any tangible effect on the car. One of the things that was talked about on the autonomous driving uh, press conference today was the fact that you know, Elon very, very specifically pointed out, it's like, look, the visual guidance system, and here we'll take this exit properly, the visual guidance system needs to be uh, the, the primary source of input for what is going on around the car. Um, you know, he's very down on LiDAR, he's also very down on um, high accuracy GPS data, and I, I totally agree on the GPS data. I'm not a LiDAR expert, but a lot of the stuff that he said seems to make sense. Uh, but as far as GPS data, it doesn't matter how high fidelity, how high fidelity it is, um, it can grow stale, and it can grow stale very quickly. And even if the GPS data is technically accurate, it doesn't take into account a number of different types of real-world situations that may have to alter the way the car is driving, like construction zones. Obviously, those aren't going to show up in the GPS. So, yeah, that's a problem that we're that we still have with the current version of Navigate on Autopilot, which is if your GPS data is off on things like the number of lanes that a road has, it doesn't seem to understand HOV lanes very well. Um, that's not specific to my area. I see that complaint a lot on the forums. Okay, I'm going to press the accelerator because Nav on Autopilot was ending. Now it should auto merge with a nice sharp auto merge. Sweet. Um, all right, and that's a lot of traffic. Let me see. Safely get over. I'm going to take over here. So I need to make some somewhat aggressive lane changes to get back onto the highway in the direction that I want to go. So, yeah, if the GPS data is not great in your area, um, it will pretty consistently cause Nav on Autopilot to do things that it probably shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, a lot of times what this means is maybe just miss an exit. You know, it's not necessarily the biggest deal. Uh, the exit that we just took and that interchange, if I were going in the opposite direction, Nav on Autopilot handles both of those directions just fine. In this particular instance, the direction happened to be the lane that was going straight. So even if Nav on Autopilot wasn't handling that, like obviously Autopilot would have just handled that. But in instances in which I were southbound on that exit, uh, then I have to veer off to the right. Nav on Autopilot both successfully takes the exit and it successfully takes the correct interchange. And in a lot of parts of the Denver metro area where I live, um, I found that's what it does. There was what I was talking about. That was an example. Ah, see it. Yep, it's doing it right now. Well, I decided against it. But yes, right like that, I have had instances where it starts to turn left, the two lanes merge into one, and then not realizing that basically it's already gotten into the lane that it needs to get into, it goes ahead and makes a left uh, lane change anyway. So then I end up moving into the middle lane in this instance, or the fast lane, depending on where I am along this highway. So, I'm just going to follow here, bump up the speed a little bit, it's actually 65, so that's another piece of GPS data that's unfortunately a little inaccurate. <clears throat> and then we're going to see one more exit here, and there's one more behavior that I'm still seeing, unfortunately, that I hope gets rectified soon. And it pertains to certain types of highway exits. So, the nice thing, if you could call it that, is at least the behavior is pretty consistent. If I have an exit that Nav on Autopilot doesn't seem to understand, um, I know every time I go back to that exit exactly what it's going to do because it is based on GPS data. It doesn't really seem to be pulling that from you know, real-world information that it's collecting from its various sensors and telemetry. Um, just as I know, as I approach this exit, that it's probably going to do the thing that I think it's going to do. But we'll see when we get there. And I've looked on openmap.org, and like some in some instances, you know, the exit is marked wrong because it's all you know automatically collected data from you know various uh, geographical and, and city mapping services, not necessarily hand entered or hand curated. All right, so here we're in the exit lane. It's about to take it. Now it's going to signal, and it's going to try to take the bus exit. Yep, does that every single time. So. In many instances, and a lot of times, you know, it is because the data is bad, and you can actually go straight to the source, and you can look at the data and say, hey, that exit's in the wrong spot. Um, but in other instances, the data in the map seems like it's fine. Uh, the car just doesn't necessarily seem to know how to interpret that data in order to be able to do a successful exit. And one of the areas that I see it consistently mess up on around here are exits where the exit is its own dedicated lane. 
Like it doesn't seem to get that once you once the lane actually Cloud one, disconnected. It doesn't necessarily need, seem to get that you need to get into that lane ahead of time. So that's one problem. The other problem is even if it does recognize that you do need to get into that lane ahead of time, it doesn't necessarily seem to recognize that if you're already in that lane, nav on autopilot doesn't need to then attempt to make an exit when that lane splits off in the highway. It sees the point where the lane splits off as the highway as being the entry point, and it will still write turn signal, even if the turn signal hasn't been on because you've already been in that exit lane for like a quarter of a mile. It'll still write turn signal, and it will still try to exit to the right, which, if there's something like a bus lane there, unfortunately, it interprets the bus lane as the exit, so that's a mistake that it makes. Um, you know, again, it's all based on GPS data, so at least it's consistent. Like, I know the areas where it's going to make these mistakes, um, and when it makes these mistakes, you know, I know that, okay, this is one where I need to take over. Uh, I do let it from time to time try to do these things on its own, just because I'm curious. Um, you know, obviously, these systems are going to improve over time, uh, and I won't know if they've improved if I don't give them the opportunity to try to do things. All right, here we are, just back on a normal, regular section of road, just driving. This is a nice straight section. This is actually capped to five miles per hour with a speed limit. Not all local roads are, uh, which is interesting, but I've talked about that in previous videos. That light is not going to turn red before we get to it. That light is. So I guess one last thing we can do is let's drive towards that light and see how close we feel comfortable getting. I'm going to slow down. We're taking over from autopilot. Nope, not doing that. Cloud right, so connected. I think that pretty much covers everything that we wanted to test for this video. Um, there'll definitely be more videos uh, playing around with the no confirm uh, nav on autopilot. I don't know if we actually got an instance of it there. I think we just stayed in the right lane pretty much the entire time. It did try to do the lane merges, but you know, obviously the lane merges are a little bit weird because of the issues that I described. But yeah, overall impressions um, of the current neural net, you know, a lot of improvements. Um, one or two areas in which it's backslid. The lane splitting is unfortunately, you know, that's that's been a problem in the past. And it's a shame that it has become a problem again. But you know, these things will continue to get refined and we'll continue to work on these edge cases. Uh, things are just gonna get better and better. But yeah, for for the straight lane keeping, I'm pretty happy with it. I just need to be a little bit extra careful to make sure that it, it doesn't try to split off into a turn lane whenever the road starts to split off. So that's all I had for this video, and thanks for watching.